Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Scott. Hey, yo. Is that it, Jungle Brother? It's gonna be Jeff Green. Rise to the top, oh yeah. And you're listening to all of the great action figures from our good friends at Hasbro. The fully postable. Have your own WrestleMania with all your favorite figures. Wrestling figure. Made sold separately from LJN. Podcast. And we are the Mount Rushmore of professional <laughs> wrestling. Hey, welcome to episode 233 of the Fully Opposable Wrestling Figure Podcast, the longest running episodic wrestling figure podcast going today for over four and a half years, a revolutionary force in wrestling figure podcast entertainment. That was actually a callback to Matt Carlos this past week on the show. He loves it when we do that. He goes, dude, it's like a callback. He goes, I love it when you guys do that. It's not cocky at all. Well, there you go. Matt Carlos said, bring it back. We brought it back. My name is Jeff. Sitting alongside next to me is my real life brother, not storyline brother, Scott. Scott, say hello. Hello. Scott, what's going on over there, man? Dude, I got a haircut today and a beard trim. Okay. I'm going to pause right there. And I know most of our listeners probably have already gotten their haircut or a beard trim or whatever they do. Were you nervous sitting in the chair? No, not at all. And let me tell you why. Since this started, this whole lockdown, quarantine face mask, huge safety deal. Since that started, the haircut place that I went to today, which is the same place I've been going to for five years now, is the safest establishment that I've walked into since this started. I got a text notification from the lady that cuts my hair and trims my beard. I got a, a text notification from her yesterday, A, confirming the appointment, but B, with an outline of steps to take upon my arrival. I had to drive up into the parking spot Text her that I was there. She let me know or texted me back when it was okay to go in. I had to wear my mask the entire time. I go inside. Their waiting area is literally two chairs about eight feet apart because they don't allow people to sit in the waiting area unless you're a parent of a child getting a haircut or you're the parent and you have to take your child with you and they sit in the chair. Two chairs in the waiting area, eight feet apart, four ladies cutting hair in chairs that were about six to seven feet apart each one person getting their hair cut in each chair. So all totaled up, there were, I think, nine people inside that little building. So everybody was socially distanced. Everybody was wearing a mask the entire time, except when I got my beard trimmed, then I had to take it off. But dude, no, I did not feel any danger. It was totally safe. And as I said earlier, it was the safest place I've been to since all of this started. So you felt okay just sitting there and Somebody touching your face, you know, like in that YouTube video where the, you know, the feet are touching the face and all that stuff. (laughs) Well, I didn't pay the extra for that. (laughs) But yes, it was completely safe the whole time. The lady that was cutting my hair, actually all the ladies that were cutting hair in there, all wearing gloves the entire time, face masks on. Everything was completely sterile. It was, it was totally clean. So yeah, I felt totally safe going in there, dude. And she had told me in advance, there's going to be some restrictions and things. Apparently, up until June 19th, they were not allowed to trim beards. So essentially, all they could do was cut your hair because mask had to be on the whole time. Something happened on June 19th. I don't know what it was, but they got the okay. Okay, go ahead and trim beards again. And I had asked her over text message, is it okay if you trim my beard? And she goes, yeah, we can do those now. But now California is under a whole new set of lockdown restrictions. And she's worried that not only are they going to stop the beard trims again, but they may actually have to close up shop again because a bunch of restaurants and bars have gotten closed. So it, it's it's a crazy time. But, dude, it felt so good to get my hair cut again. It was incredible. I will never take that for granted again. It was awesome. I felt like a caveman in this house. Like, it, my hair was getting shaggy. My beard was completely overgrown. I was like four months over. And, yeah, it's a small problem to have with everything going on. But really, it's a life lesson. Don't take the little things for granted. Even something as small as a haircut or a beard trim, enjoy it. And what mask were you wearing out of curiosity? Well, it's funny you ask about masks, Jeff. I have not yet washed my WFP mask that I'm sure everybody has seen the picture of now. I haven't washed it yet. I only wore it long enough to take the pictures in it. Uh, But that's going to be in the washing machine this weekend. I just wore my regular black mask, but... We do now have, as you've all seen on social media, I'm sure, fully posable masks. Hit us up in our DM. $16 shipped. They are going quick. So if you want one, get in. $16 shipped. They're comfy. 
they're comfortable. I, they look great on your face, too, with that big shield right in your snout. It's just awesome. Just telling everybody, Fig Life, WFP. So if you want one, hit us up in our DMs. PayPal is fully posable, WFP at gmail.com. $16 shipped, one heck of a deal. You can get any of our past t-shirts at Pro Wrestling Tees or whatamaneuver.net. And we have two new designs going up this month. And we are going to, again, donate to a cause. So any shirt sales from the month of July will be going to what cause, Scott? Yes, Jeff. This month, the month of July, all proceeds from shirt sales are going to be going towards the RAIN organization, R-A-I-N-N. You can check them out online at RAIN, R-A-I-N-N dot org. RAIN is the nation's largest anti-sexual violence organization. And for the month of July, all proceeds from our shirt sales are going to be donated to RAIN. You can follow us on Twitter, YouTube, Snapchat, and the Book of Faces. at. F- I've given up, Scott. At Fully Posable, Instagram <laughs> Fully Posable, WFP. I'm giving up, dude. We're going to get another four star. We'll just have to accept it. <laughs> now we're going to be flooded with four stars because you literally <laughs> cannot say the word Facebook. You turn it into three words. Book of Faces. No. One word. Easier. Facebook. I blame Matt Hardy. Sad. You can go back and listen to any of our past podcasts on FullyOpposablePodcast.com, Stitcher, iTunes, iHeartRadio, Spotify, Player FM, Google Play. Uh, What else are we on, Scott? Podbean app, if you're on the go. You name it, we're on it. Hit the podcast button on your phone. As Steve said from the PPW Podcast, hit the podcast button. We'll show up. Speaking of Steve at the PPW Podcast, Scott and I were on his show last night which actually the show will be dropping this past friday as you listen to this i know that's a little confusing but anyways we were on his show fun fun interview it was his uh content creator show and scott and i were both on scott you graced us with your presence i did you know cleared the schedule and jumped on with you guys it was a lot of fun and it's a brilliant concept by steve really and something that if you're in the market to start a podcast or a youtube channel or both he does a content creator show and he has people on that have created content for podcasts, for YouTube channels. And those people share their knowledge, their experience with Steve. And it's a great listen. If you're, as I said, if you're in the market to start either of those or both of those, give his shows a listen, the content creator show. It's a brilliant concept. And the people doing the shows, not just Jeff and myself, anybody that has been on his show is imparting knowledge and experience that if you're going to jump into that realm of podcast or YouTube channels, it's experience that's invaluable. It's information that's invaluable. It's stuff that you want to latch onto and really take to heart and use that experience to further your own shows. So again, if you're in the market to start a YouTube channel or a podcast, definitely give Steve's uh, PPW podcast content creator series a listen. You might gain some valuable knowledge from it. Please rate and review on iTunes. Scott, we don't have a review this week, so I'm going to say it's from Steve at the PPW Podcast. Hey, guys. Thanks for being on my show. Steve. So I'm going to just say it was from Steve. <laughs> Gave a sweet five stars. Thank you, Steve. <laughs> five stars, the end. Thanks. <laughs> Steve may or may not have sent in that iTunes review. <laughs> <laughs> but it was a lot of fun doing that show with Steve. I had a blast. It was a lot of fun. I actually love going on his show anytime. You and I were talking about it last night. Uh, There was one night Steve messaged me right after you and I had recorded. Literally about an hour, hour and a half right after you and I recorded. He goes, hey, you want to do a show? And literally it was like midnight his time. It was 10 here. And I'm like, okay. (laughs) Why not? I was like, what are we talking about? He goes, I don't know. (laughs) I'm like, are we just going to start talking to each other? Like what's going on here? He goes, uh, let's talk about signings. And I'm like, all right, cool. And we just did a show that night. It was pretty funny. Nice. And I'm sure it turned out great. Cause a lot of times those impromptu shows, they're pretty fun. They are. They are. Thank you again for having us on Steve. You can send us any audio questions, questions, or anything else at all to fully posable WFP at gmail.com. Scott, I am going to throw it over to you for FOCO because we love those people over at FOCO and... Jeff, yes. do you want to prove you're the undisputed world heavyweight champion of WWE fandom? Of course you do. FOCO.com is here to help. With FOCO's WWE bobbleheads, 
You can visit Suplex City with Brock Lesnar and Paul Heyman, let in the fiend Bray Wyatt, and break some glass with Stone Cold Steve Austin. FOCO's line of WWE bobbleheads includes all your favorite superstars and legends from then, now, and forever, including Becky Lynch, The Rock, Ric Flair, John Cena, Seth Rollins, AJ Styles, Ronda Rousey, Andre the Giant, and more. These bobbleheads from FOCO are handcrafted and hand-painted to depict the biggest names in sports entertainment, making them must-haves for fans and collectors alike. Don't miss out on these awesome collectibles. Head to FOCO.com now. That's F-O-C-O.com. One more time, Jeff, just for you. F-O-C-O.com, where at checkout you can input code WFP10 and save yourself a sweet 10%. And don't forget, they currently have the Undertaker and Hulk Hogan bobbleheads that just got added a couple weeks ago, still on the site. Check them out, throw them in your cart, use code WFP10 and save yourself 10% off of everything in your cart. Scott, we have an omission to an omission. <laughs> yes, I'm never going to live this one down. We should just get the omission no. from that episode every week for like the rest of the summer. It would be incredible. <laughs> <laughs> so bc underscore ray 27 congratulations on the soon to be bouncing baby but back on june 16th ray actually tweeted us and said did scott add a new episode to the star wars canon this week with power of the force <laughs> I missed the tweet. Ray hit me up when he was listening to the show this past week. And he's like, hey, dude, I think you missed this. And he sent that tweet. Anyways, I was like, I got to give you credit, man. You said that as well. So I got to give you credit as well. <laughs> you know, you are the social media manager for Fully Posable, Jeff. It's all you. You are the guy. And you get flooded. And you did miss Ray's tweet. And Ray would have been the first to call me out unless it was Dave that hit us on text immediately when he listened to the show. But it's so funny, man, to get called out on that. It didn't even occur to me that I had said it until I saw Dave's text message where he was like, dude, what's power of the force? That's not a movie. I was like, oh my. And I knew immediately what he was talking about. I, I had just completely blanked on the name threw power of the force out there. What the hell, man? I don't even know how I could call myself a Star Wars fan. I'm so embarrassed. How dare you, Scott? I mean, how dare I? Get security to throw me out of here. What the hell? Even I knew the power of the force was wrong. Well, okay, you're getting a little carried away with yourself because no, you didn't. <laughs> oh, I didn't? No, you didn't. Oh. <laughs> we weren't oh. talking about Deadpool or porn. Come on. Yeah, those <laughs> those are very two popular subjects with me. Yeah, and old school and stepbrothers. Yes, definitely stepbrothers. Absolutely. Oh, and Jackass, because that's your favorite movie of all time. Okay, so it's one and one A. It's Jackass and Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back. <laughs> Dude, what about the new Jay and Silent Bob? Did you see that yet? It was good. No, it wasn't. You didn't like it, huh? Disagree. Dude, it... it okay, we're getting way, way off of topic of wrestling figures Yeah, we here. are. Holy crap. <laughs> but it it, it, to, it wasn't funny to me. It was it was forced. It, it just felt like Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back like 15 to 20 year old leftovers being reheated in a broken microwave. Like it just, it fell really flat to me. And it's funny because I've read so many reviews of people that were like, if you liked Jay and Silent Bob, you're going to love the new one. And I'm like, ugh. okay, maybe, you know what it is, dude? Maybe I'm just too old for it. Maybe that humor has just, it's passed me by. I don't think that it has because I'm super excited for the Beavis and Butthead newly announced reboot that's going to be on Comedy Central. I'm, I'm pumped. I can't wait. But I, that movie just fell flat to me. I, I didn't care for it. I'm glad that you enjoyed it and everybody that enjoyed it. That's awesome. I wish I could have too because I was excited for it. And then I sat down with huge anticipation like, yes, I can't wait to see this. And then by the end of it, I was like, uh, well, there's an hour and a half of my life I'll never get back. I see what you mean, though, by feeling forced. I do see what you mean. I kind of got that feeling as well. But maybe the goggles were on for me. The nostalgia goggles of I love the first one that maybe I was just kind of sitting there going, okay, this is cool. But at the same time, I, I agree with you where you said it was it felt forced. It, yeah. And, you know, I, I actually went back and watched Clerks 2 again because I don't think I had watched it since I saw it in the theater with you. When it came out, what, 05, I think that movie came out. And that one, to me, still stands up. It was 05, right? 06, something like that? Yeah, 06. 
Yeah, somewhere in there. So I loved it in the theater, and I was like, you know what? I wonder if that one still stands up. I watched Clerks 2 again. I loved it again. So I loved Clerks 2. I watched it probably four months ago, five months ago. It still stood up. The humor was still relevant to me. I laughed. I enjoyed it, especially the donkey show part. But just something about that new Jay and Silent Bob, man. I just, I didn't care for it. But Bully Ray, huge congratulations on the baby to be. And Jeff, I think it would be remiss of us if we didn't throw out a huge congratulations to Soda and his family. His wife delivered their baby girl today, which Thursday, the show's dropping. It was about two or three days ago. Huge congratulations to Soda Hunter and his family on their new baby girl, Skylar. Huge congrats to you guys. Lots of love your way. Congratulations, Soda. Very happy for you and your family. Uh, Scott, his name isn't Bully Ray. It's just Ray. But he's Bully Ray on Twitter, right? No, he's BC Ray. Oh. I thought he was Bully Ray. No, Bully Ray is the dude from the Dudleys. (laughs) Oh. Oh, well, my apology. Hey, it would be a lot cooler if it was Bully Ray. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> if I was Ray, I'd be throwing bullying in front of it. Like, yeah, screw it. That's my name now. What's up? No, absolutely. Happy for Soda and happy for Ray as well. Before we get into our finger poke of dooms, I'm excited about all the content we have coming out in the next few weeks. Like we just had a great, great interview with a local Northern California wrestlers named Matt Carlos. Fantastic interview. I hope everybody enjoyed it. So far, the feedback has been great. If you guys haven't listened to it, I highly recommend it. Even if you just skip every little show that we throw out there in between the main show, I cannot stress enough, go back and listen to the Matt Carlos episode. It was a lot, a lot of fun. And it was great sitting down and talk to him. We have Chris Petrillo coming up from Figures Toy Company on a special interview. And then after that, we have another interview that's going to be thrown into the show. Now... I am going to preface, this will be in about two, maybe three weeks. We'll give you guys a heads up. If you do not like Scott talking about G.I. Joe's, you're probably not going to like this episode. But I'm very excited for this episode, and I'm very excited for Scott because he just gets to blurt out his fandom. (laughs) So I am excited for this episode. So far, I have to say, Scott's G.I. Joe talk has been probably one of the hottest things that we've done in a long time. It was just a happy accident, too. Next thing I know, I'm getting flooded with messages. I love Scott talking about G.I. Joe's. I love Scott talking about G.I. Joe's. I'm like, this is crazy. I almost gave you a segment, too. I was like, <laughs> Scott's going to have a G.I. Joe segment. We're, <laughs> you know, but in a couple of weeks, we will have a special interview with two upstanding gentlemen that, to talk G.I. Joe's, talk wrestling figures, talk toys. A lot of fun, entertaining content coming up. Scott, did you do any finger poke of doom? I did. And on that note of G.I. Joe, I don't have any wrestling figure finger poke of doom to report. But last Friday on Facebook, Hasbro had reveals for both Transformers, which I skipped, and G.I. Joe, which I was very interested in. And Jeff, you should have seen me Friday morning. I woke up and literally the very first thing that popped in my head was... Hasbro has G.I. Joe reveals today. I was like a little kid running around upstairs. I had work going on, but I knew at 10, I think it was 1030 a.m. or 10 a.m. They had reveals. And dude, I put G.I. Joe cartoons on because Hasbro has a streaming channel on YouTube where they just play G.I. Joe cartoons. So I had that going on the TV turned up. I had the Facebook page up with the countdown and dude they were playing the gi joe music during the countdown and like all of my nostalgia feels kicked in and i can't tell you how excited it was like that excitement when you jump on to a website and you're waiting for the reveals from san diego comic-con to come in about what new wrestling figures you're gonna see Mm -hmm. and it's that excitement when the pictures finally hit and you're scrolling picture by picture and you're seeing all the new stuff coming out and you're like oh there's him and oh there's him And I can also equate it to access when you run up on the Mattel booth and you're looking at all of the new figures that are up there and there's all that excitement running through you and you're trying to to see everything at once. And each little thing you see is a brand new excitement that pops up in you. Well, that's how I felt sitting in front of the computer waiting for the G.I. Joe reveals from Hasbro. They start with the reveal process and while they didn't go into the three and three quarter inch retro line that's going to be hitting Walmart soon... They did go over some of the new six inch classified figures that are going to be coming out. And I mentioned last week about the whole NTWRK debacle, which really nice of Hasbro. They fell on their sword 
admitted it that it was their fault about the whole network. De- or, I'm sorry, not network because they don't like the E's and the O's, the vowels. They're just <laughs> the network. So Hasbro fell on their sword, said it wasn't their fault. Whatever, I'm never going through them, through them again. But they did say that they were going to have pre-orders on their site at, what was it, 10 a.m. Okay, so the reveal was at, I think it was at 9.30 Gosh, I'm losing track of last Friday already. That's bad. Anyway, pre-sales of new figures for the 6-inch classified line went on pre-sale on the Hasbro Pulse site at 10 a.m. In addition to that, they had a Storm Shadow exclusive figure that went up for pre-sale on Amazon at the same time. They announced that about 10 minutes before 10. So I immediately jumped onto Hasbro Pulse, immediately jumped on to Amazon and I'm just waiting on the pages to load. I'm hitting refresh like a madman. I'm waiting on those pre-sales to go live. With all that said, the light blue Cobra Commander that Network screwed up went on pre-sale at 10. In addition to the new Series 2 figures, which was Gung Ho, Red Ninja, uh, Pimped Out Destro, but they call him Profit Director Destro. <laughs> right. So those went on pre-sale at 10 o'clock on Hasbro Pulse. The Storm Shadow went on sale on Amazon at 10 o'clock. And I got everything pre-ordered in addition to re- to rounding out my Series 1 that I hadn't finished yet. I had only gotten Destro and Snake Eyes from Series 1. So I rounded out my Series 1 collection with Scarlet, Duke, and Roadblock. So at the end of the day, I've got everything pre-ordered or in hand. And I'm only missing one. And that's the Red Ninja from Series 2. And I'm on the fence if I'm going to buy him or not. I'm like, okay, do I want to just get him to get him so I have complete sets? Or am I not going to be that guy that's just grabbing everything? Right, I I haven't really decided which way I'm going to go yet. I might get him at some point, maybe if I see him on the store pegs or he's on Amazon and boom, there's a deal and I can get him on Prime. Okay, just buy him. Um, I haven't decided if I'm going to buy all these yet. But the part that really got me is they said they were looking into making vehicles for the six-inch line, which really piqued my interest. I'm like, sweet, I'm finally going to get that 17-foot aircraft carrier that I can throw in the swimming pool. This is awesome. (laughs) Jeff can come over and help me build it. It'll be a great day. Lots of fun. I'll play beer pong on the deck. It'll be great. (laughs) So anyway, it was just, it was really cool to get in all my nostalgia feels that morning. And like I said, it was like a little kid waking up Christmas morning with the excitement of what's under the tree. Well, my excitement that day is what's Hasbro going to show me in the new GI Joe line. And I I don't want to bore our wrestling figure collectors with the whole GI Joe talk, but it's one of those things that's why not try a little extra seasoning in the soup? one time you know and just see how it goes and like you said jeff a lot of people have been turned on to it they're enjoying the talk and we'll keep it going until you guys tell us to to knock it off you know once you guys say okay enough gi joe we'll cut it out again as we always say we tailor this show to you guys so if you want me to stop talking gi joes more than happy to do it maybe i'll start a gi joe podcast or something but it's it's so much fun getting in my feels about gi joe and when they did the relaunch back in 07, I was in no financial position to be buying those. So it's been nice 13 years later to go back and buy some of those that I missed out on. I do have a collection of the the modern Joes. As I mentioned, uh, Rev Hoops hooked me up on a deal. And it's cool to see the whole G.I. Joe relaunch. We're going to talk about another possible relaunch during our new segment that might be coming up with a wrestler attached to it. But just getting all these 80s lines again. Dude, they made a DeLorean Transformers figure. Wait, what? Yeah. The Back to the Future car has become a Transformers figure. Are you serious? Yeah. So the DeLorean transforms into an Autobot. I think his name is Gigawatt. Oh my God, dude. That is brilliant. Guess how many pieces they're making? How many? 1,985 to represent the year the movie came out. Oh my God. I applaud that. Yeah, so they went on uh, pre-sale this morning. It would be Thursday this morning, uh, July 2nd, at 10 a.m., and I think they were immediately gone. So if you were able to get your hands on one, that's great. I think they're going to do a couple pre-orders on some different sites, so they held back some of the stock. But yeah, it just it's such a cool time for us kids that did grow up in the 80s to see all those lines that we knew and loved back in the 80s having a full resurrection today. I mean, Transformers, Ninja Turtles, wrestling figures, G.I. Joe – you name it, it's coming back. And as I said, there's another one that we're going to talk about in the new segment that might be coming back as well. Thundercats has had several reincarnations. So it's just, it's such a cool time to be a toy collector. And our poor wallets, oh my goodness. And Jeff, I will say too, that I was texting with Sean Jacoby, special guest Sean, and uh, Breaker, 
during the whole pre-sale thing. I think I was texting with Christopher Dean as well. And it was just cool, like, our, our little circle of G.I. Joe, like, we're texting back and forth, and did you see this? Did you see that? Any news about the three and three quarter inch? No, not yet. They held out. Probably going to hold it up until San Diego Comic-Con. But then you have that extra piece that, okay, now I'm really looking forward to the end of July with Comic-Con because there's going to be even more information about the three and three quarter inch line, maybe about other 80s toy lines that are going to be making a comeback. So really just a cool resurgence of the 80s happening in 2020. And I love it. I'm here for it. Well, I'm glad you had a lot of fun with that, dude. I really did. I really did. So I'm going to turn it back to wrestling figures. So I told you guys last week that I am on the hunt for the Jax Deluxe Classics. And I'm I'm really holding out for good prices. And I'm trying to keep it anywhere between $30 to $50 in that range. You know, obviously, if I get it on the 30 side, I'm going to be stoked about that. So I luckily found a Mr. Perfect for $39.99 shipped. Oh, that's not bad. I thought so too. I, I really did. It was the only one between Mercari and eBay that I could find. I found a British Bulldog with the European title. And this guy originally wanted 50 So I shot my shot and I, and he, oh, by the way, he had $14 shipped. Oh. So I shot my shot and dropped it down to 40 Shipped? No, unfortunately, he would not drop the ship. So he did sell it to me for 40 but the shipping was it went above the $50 mark that I'm trying to keep it between. Gotcha. So unfortunately, I went above that just by a few dollars. I am talking to one guy about The Undertaker where he was in the silver or sorry, the gray and the black and not okay. Ministry Taker. Okay. I'm talking to one guy. I'm trying to see if he'll go a little bit lower to get underneath the $50 mark. So that's my Jack's Deluxe Classic talk this week. There was nothing really, anything else that I picked up. I got some stuff from Eric. He he had a couple extra figures. He, dude, his week last week on finding figures or his weekend, this past weekend on finding figures was insane. It was one of the greatest hauls I've ever seen. And nice. he, had, I, he had a Lacey Evans and a John Cena left over. And he goes... These are the only ones I've got left over out of all the figures I found. And he found like two cases of Elite 76. Nice. I was like, dude, I said, well, you know what? I'll take them off your hands. He goes, okay, you know, cost plus shipping, you know, the fig life rule. <laughs> yes. <laughs> the fig life uh, and legwork rule. Yeah, it's commandment number one, cost plus shipping. <laughs> right. We need a shirt that says cost plus shipping. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> So anyways, I took those off of his hands and he sent that over. So thank you, Eric, for sending those over. But dude, this Jack's Deluxe Classic wormhole I'm going down, dude. Oh man, I love these things so much. And it makes me wonder, because I talked about this a couple of weeks ago. Jeremy had made a tweet that said, what was after the Deluxe body styles? And he goes, well, I was going to go in this Gen 2, whatever Gen 2 was. I would love to know what this Gen 2 design looked like. It wasn't going to be basically more scaled down like Mattel Elites. Uh, did they have drawings of it? I would love to see what this Gen 2 thing was that he had masterminded up. Well, as long as it wasn't R3 tech, I think it would have been phenomenal. Yeah, tell me about it. Was not a fan of those. <laughs> I, you know what's funny, dude, is some people actually were turned off by us kind of bad-mouthing R3 tech when we first started the show. <laughs> really? <laughs> Like, we hate you guys. Shut up. They're like, oh, you guys don't like R3 tech. I'm not listening to you. I'm like, all right, whatever. <laughs> See, that's the fun of the fig life, though. We agree. We disagree. There's going to be discussions, not arguments, discussions. That's part of the fun of it. Well, it's like what I said on Steve's PPW content creator show. We had people tune us out because we liked FTC. Yeah, that's true. That's true. This is 100% truth. People just turned off the radio because we liked FTC. And I was like, okay, so that means the 98% of the rest of the show was like that bad that you had to turn the rest of it off? I, I don't know. Hmm. Yeah, but you know, there was a lot of flack about the whole FTC thing to begin with because I remember we had said that we liked the FTC Kevin Steen better than the Mattel first version of Kevin Owens. We preferred FTCs. And we took a lot of flack over that, but it was never to the extent where like, you know, bad words were exchanged or like unfollow. But it, that's the fun part about the fig life. There's always going to be discussions, but nobody's ever right and nobody's ever wrong. At the end of the day, it's just an opinion. 
Yeah, you like what you like. Exactly. I, well, I mean, I'll take that back. There are cases of being wrong. In your case, Jeff, Macho Man San Diego Comic-Con being the seventh best figure of 2019. That's wrong. 100% just, you are incorrect, sir. I think you're right. That you're incorrect? That I was incorrect. Oh, good. It was the ninth best figure of 2019, but I can't go back. No, you can't. You can't change your answer. (laughs) So you should be happy with seventh, Scott. (laughs) I'll never forgive you for that. Ever. (laughs) I'm going to go to my grave. That's going to be my last words ever spoken. I still love on the PPW podcast, Steve's like, have you guys ever gotten into a fight about something on the show? It's like, yeah, it was Macho Man Slim Jim. (laughs) (laughs) That that has been like the biggest disagreement ever. We're like eight months later, seven months later, and we're still fighting about that. Four and a half years, dude. And the only disagreement we've had was the Macho Man (laughs) series being uh, in at number seven. (laughs) I guess we're doing okay if that's the case. I guess so. Scott, we do need to jump into the news. What do you say we get into it? Let's talk about it. Oh, you gonna learn today. Scott, before we get into the news, why don't you talk about our good friends over at Manscaped? Yes, do not fast forward. This is the summer read for Manscaped. New and improved new products because Jeff, summer is in full action, and we are thankful for our sponsor today, Manscaped, for keeping us fresh. Sun's out, bum's out, and hopefully your pubes are not out. Manscaped (laughs) offers all the right tools to keep your hair groomed above and below the belt. Manscaped is dedicated to helping you level up your full body grooming game. They actually just released their Shears 2.0 Nail Kit, which is the perfect add-on to their Lawnmower 3.0 or Perfect Package. The Shears 2.0 is a luxury four-piece nail kit featuring tempered stainless steel tools, and it includes slashed tipped tweezers, rounded point scissors, fingernail clippers, and a medium grit nail file. You're probably wearing flip-flops and people don't want to see those nasty unclipped toes of yours. That's actually very, very true. Very true. Dudes, come on. Tidy it up downstairs, please. (laughs) No one likes an ungroomed set of feet, fingers, and most importantly, balls. That's why they have forever changed the grooming game with their Perfect Package 3.0. The Perfect Package 3.0 kit comes with the Essential Lawn Mower 3.0 water-resistant cordless body trimmer and a ton of other liquid formulations to round out your manscaping routine. This is the best trimmer on the market for those of you in need of a chest shave or a ball cleanup. This third generation trimmer features skin safe technology to reduce manscaping accidents. Inside the perfect package, you'll also find Manscaped Crop Preserver, an anti-chafing ball deodorant and moisturizer because we know how painful chafing can be when you're wearing your bathing suit all day. You'll also find the Crop Reviver, a testy toner that's designed to give you a pep (laughs) in your step. Subscribe to the Perfect Package and get a new blade refill for your lawnmower trimmer delivered to your door every three months. For a limited time, subscribers get two free gifts, the Shed Travel Bag, a $39 value, and the patented high-performance reduced chafing Manscaped Boxer Briefs, which are incredibly comfortable, Jeff. Get 20% off plus free shipping with the code WFP20 at manscaped.com. Do yourself a favor and always use the right tools for the job. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code WFP20 at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com and use code WFP20 because Jeff, summer is here and it's time to manscape. It is. Like we said last week, those dates are starting to fire back up as things are starting to loosen back up. Well, I guess outside of California, Jeff, I do want to say that I did get the weed whacker and that would be the, uh, the nose trimming tool. Yep. I love it. Absolutely love it. You were so right. And I can say in the past, I really only had one bad experience with a nose hair trimmer and I had plucked one out of the bottom of my nose and it literally, it felt like it ripped it out from my throat and it was <laughs> bleeding so bad. And to that, to this day, ever since that happened, I've been like super careful when I'm in there with the nose hair trimmer. But with the weed whacker, dude, I went right to town. It took care of everything and it was completely clean. It took like a minute 
and everything was just like done. Yep. It was it was so so nice, no pain, no nothing. I didn't have to like kind of be super careful with it. Just zip zam zoom done. Highly recommended. Love the weed whacker. I've been using the lawnmower. Uh, you know where you're supposed to use it, but also armpit hair is another spot. Not just chest hair, not just downstairs. Armpit hair as well. Trim that up, dude. The thing, it's a breeze to use. I love it. No pulls, no nicks, no nothing. Highly recommended. I can't say enough good things about the boxers as well, guys. It's super, super comfortable. Great products over at Manscaped. Check them out. WFP20, 20% off, plus free shipping. Are you doing like yoga positions to shave and stuff? Or <laughs> what are you doing over there? <laughs> well, no need. There's a light on it. I can see everything. All right, all right. Hashtag blessed, Jeff. 2020 isn't all bad. Scott, this is kind of a listener question type thing, but somebody messaged us and said, do you think Mattel Creations could be like HasLab? And before we go into answering the question, please explain what HasLab is. HasLab was essentially GoFundMe for Hasbro. They were really having their customers put their money where their mouth is. And they made, HasLab made the Jabba the Hutt sail barge as seen from Return of the Jedi. Did I get that movie right, guys? It was Return of the Jedi? Let me know if not. I know it wasn't Power of the Force. They made the Jabba the Hutt sail barge from Return of the Jedi. And (laughs) I'm never going to live that one down, man. Star Wars fans are going to whoop my ass over that one for years to come. But they threw it out there like, hey, if you guys want this made, here's the dollar amount that we need to hit. Go. Go. And guess what? The crowd went crazy. Go, they did. And they funded that project above and beyond what they had asked for. And guess what? They got their job of the hut sale barge. So that's what HasLab was. It was was really forcing the customers to put their money where their mouth is. Because look, wrestling figure fans, we do it all the time. Oh, you guys should make so-and-so. Or you guys should make this tag team. Or you guys should make this accessory. HasLab did that. They they said, okay, you guys want this made? Fund this much and we'll put it into production. If Mattel Creations is what HasLab was, good on Mattel. They're hearing us wrestling figure collectors going, oh, you guys should do this. You guys should do that. Well, if you really want, say, Dino Bravo or say Hercules or insert name here of singles or tag teams or faction performers, if you want those guys fund this much and guess what you'll get that figure i'm all for it i am all for it because we like to talk we like to wish list but we don't know if that figure is going to be profitable for them we have no idea we just know that we want that figure in our collection but if it's profitable for mattel that's really what their bottom line is right we have to be able to make money off of this thing well you tell us what your dollar amount is that you need to hit to make that in our collection and profitable for your company. Tell us what that dollar amount is, make us pay it. And if we hit that number, boom, we get that figure. I think that's fair. So you think Mattel Creations could be a mixture of HasLab and Hasbro Pulse? Uh, You know what? I think it's going to be more similar to what Hasbro Pulse is to where you can pre-order upcoming products. I think that that's what it's going to be more like, but Mm I am 100% in favor of them making something available on that site that would be very similar to what HasLab is. Do a crowdsourcing figure. Just try it one time. Give us Dino... I'm just throwing Dino Bravo out as an example because we hear his name a lot on people's wish lists. Throw Dino Bravo out there. If you guys submit this much money, we're going to make sure that each and every person that... I I keep wanting to call it a Kickstarter, but it's not. If you guys put $10,000, I'm just going to use that as an example, put $10,000 in this pot, everybody that contributes gets a Dino Bravo figure. Would they hit that number? I don't know. There would be different levels, I'm sure. But, or they would just have one flat, like, okay, 20 bucks into the pool and you get a Dino Bravo figure. I don't know of many collectors, and I'm talking about people that you and I correspond with, on social media, Jeff, I don't know anybody that wouldn't throw 20 bucks into that pot to have Dino Bravo made. Would it be enough to hit 10 or $20,000? I don't know. I'm, I would guess, yes, it would be enough. So yeah, I think it would make a lot of sense for them just to try it once. Just try it one time. It's almost risk-free, right? 
Worst that happens, right. you don't hit that number by X date. All the money goes back to the people that contributed. And ah, well, we tried it. Guess what, Fully Posable? You guys were wrong. Ha ha. Everybody moves on with their day. <laughs> but I don't think that we're wrong. Given the right names that people have been clamoring for for years, I, I think that that could work in the collectors and Mattel's favor. I honestly, I don't think it's going to be like HasLab. I think it's going to be more like Hasbro Pulse, as you said, Jeff. But you know what? Let's just try it. Can we just try it? Like, get the guy under a license. Make us pay for his figure. Just try it. Throw it against the wall and see what sticks. If it's successful and you go above and beyond what you're asking for, hey, guess what? Maybe there's a market here for that. You know, it's a win for us as a collector. It's a win for Mattel. They're going to make money. So I'm 100% in favor. And as I always say, make the collectors put their money where their mouth is because we like to wish list a lot, but we don't ever see the profitability, profitability, God, let me try that one again. The profitability, <laughs> really? <laughs> profitability. Pro, pro, thank you. Profitability <laughs> ability, D, <laughs> of that figure. So just try it. That, that's really what I'm getting at. Just try it. Do it one time. Give us a name that you know people have been clamoring for for years and just see what happens. I agree, dude. Very well said. Like you said, they need to say, hey, okay, put your money where your mouth is. It's time. Here you go. You know, here's... Maybe there's a wrestler that we wanted that was in a different character or something like that. You know, maybe the obscure character that everybody would be like, oh my God, like the Shockmaster. We all lost our crap when we saw the Shockmaster. Yes, we did. And so what did we do? We, everybody was trying to get that figure, San Diego Comic-Con and whatever it may be. But we put our money where our mouth was regarding that Shockmaster figure. I think there was a few left over, if I'm not mistaken. But just when you see the value of those Legends figure that Maddie Collector did... You can't help but think that really the collectors did put their money where their mouth was when that Legends line was out because they sold out so quickly. And I have to think history would repeat itself because wrestling figures haven't diminished in popularity since they did that Legends line on Maddie Collector. They have increased in popularity. So you got to think that there would be a huge upside to Mattel doing something similar to what Maddie Collector was with this Mattel Creations site. But given the name Mattel Creations, great create pre-orders for stuff that isn't retail exclusive being the elite and the basic and the battle pack lines do something along the line or along the line of what maddie collector was in terms of give us legends again do uh special order legends but let's throw something against the wall and see what sticks really try that crowdfunding thing there's really no harm in it right it's it's very low risk if the numbers not hit everybody gets their money back and we move on with our day but it has the potential to be something really cool, but I see it being more along the lines of what Hasbro Pulse is, where really it's just a lot of pre-orders, and every once in a while you get a treat with like a special figure that pops up, and it's only available for this long on pre-order. That's all well and good, but I'm excited to see what Mattel has in store, because look, it's another spot that we can go to get figures, and that's a good thing. Scott, moving along, there was a new Masters of the Universe ring with snakes in the corner with Hulk Hogan. And Stone Cold Steve Austin. I'll have you go into this since you are a Masters of the Universe nerd. <laughs> well, that's the funny thing is I'm really not, though. I, I used to love Masters of the Universe back in the day, but I checked out of this line. I, I This is not a rabbit hole I can jump down with getting into the G.I. Joes and all the different wrestling figures that I collect, especially with all the new players in the game. I had to, to, to pare down the list of figures that were going to be in my collection and masters of the universe, unfortunately did not make the cut to be in the collection. So as cool as these are, especially given the fact that they are so close to the Remco's that you can now start putting Hulk Hogan, Macho Man, John Cena, Roman Reigns, Sting, all these guys into your Remco collection. And it's almost perfectly in scale. These are ones that I'm not going to collect. However, I do think that they are awesome. I love the uniqueness of them. I love the crossover appeal to Masters of the Universe. I love the special rings that they're doing. I think these things are incredible. And I'm excited that you guys are excited about it because I'm seeing nothing but love for these. So if you love these, put your money behind it. It's going to keep the line going. I'll say it again. Put your money where your mouth is. Mattel's giving you guys this. Keep putting money into it to ensure that it goes on. 
that you get more waves of these figures. Don't let the line just go one year and then boom, it's done. You know, keep keep funding this. It's better than the monsters and the zombies. I love the crossover appeal alone on that fact. So keep putting your money behind this and Mattel will hopefully keep making more. I love seeing them, just my money can't go to this line. I had an omission a couple months ago that this line is doing way better than I ever thought it was going to. Like, I thought it was going to be like zombies and mutants. I thought three series done out of here. Yeah. But you know what? You guys put your money where your mouth is. You guys are picking up the Ray Mysterios. You guys are picking up the Romans. You guys are picking up. These figures are basically, I won't say completely gone when I go to Walmart, but they're damn near close. Yeah. So kudos to the people that love this line. You guys are going out there. Kudos to the people that are doing customs with these things. Travis Fowler did some customs with those. The Legion of Doom customs are awesome. Kudos to the people that were Remco fans that are going to pick these up. I mean, this line, I guess, just kind of encompasses everything. So kudos to everyone that's back in this line because you guys are doing well and you guys are making Mattel see that they need to make more and do more with this and put out a ring with four snakes in each corner with Hogan and Austin. You guys are doing well and kudos to everyone for back in this line. And I love that that other part of the crossover, Jeff. You brought it up. It's not just a crossover of WWE and Masters of the Universe. It's WWE, Masters of the Universe, and Remco. Like, that's a huge trifecta right there. And I love seeing, as you said, Jeff, the customs that are being made. I've seen some Legion of Doom customs that I think Travis Fowler did a Legion of Doom. I know Jason Wolf did a Legion of Doom. They looked incredible. So kudos to you guys. Definitely keep this line going. Keep funding it. As you said, Jeff, they are flying off the shelves, flying off the pegs. So keep it going. Keep putting your money behind this. And let's see how long it'll go. Keeping with He-Man, news.toyark.com. This happened to pop up in my feed. And I wish I would have gotten the gentleman's name who posted this. I apologize. But he had a pre-order. Listings have not gone live just yet. However, there are some hidden listings on the Walmart site without images that name even more figures. The hidden listings include the following figures. Jake the Snake Roberts, Kane, and Rowdy Roddy Piper. Kane is actually made to be a Masters of the Universe figure. Yeah, you could argue that The Fiend at some point needs to go into this line as well, assuming that it goes a few more series and they can fit him in. But you're 100% right. I mean, the guy was made to be an action figure, was also made to be a Masters of the Universe character for sure. Love the addition of Jake as well. They had several Snake characters in the He-Man line originally. Jake makes a lot of sense to fit in there. I like the addition of Rowdy Roddy Piper too. I wonder how they're going to kind of incorporate Masters of the Universe into the Rowdy Roddy Piper character. Like maybe his bagpipes will be a weapon of some sort. Or his belt, maybe. I I don't know, but I'm looking forward to seeing what they do with those three names. But that's great news that they still have names in the hopper. So, again, going back to our conversation we just had about him, keep funding it. Keep this line going. I'd love to see this thing go two, three, maybe four years. Last weekend, DeepDiscount.com, Scott, had the Triple H and China 2-pack for purchase. And shout out to my friend Norm, who lives out here in Fremont, California, Norm was the one that found this and he sent it over to me. And I'm like, dude, I'm posting this. Sure enough, dude, I posted it. Everybody went and just flooded deep discount to get this. I don't know what's going to happen so far. Everything's confirmed. Nice. I haven't gotten an email kicked back saying, you know, the order's been canceled or anything. Norm and uh, Deontay both vouch for this place. They say, and uh, uh, Rob down in Southern California, both, all, all vouched for this website saying they used to order DVDs, CDs, basically physical media from this place back in the day. So when they they saw this, they were like, oh, crap. And so Norm sent it over to me. I posted it. People went bonkers. They flooded deepdiscount.com. If you dig deeper into the website, they also have pre-orders at basically Walmart pricing for future elites. I think there was a Ricochet that's coming up. And I, I I know there is a Ricochet coming up and I can't remember which elite series. I thought it was 80. Don't quote me on that. Well, there's a top picks Ricochet coming out too. Well, there is that one as well. There was also a mystery two pack, elite two pack, I should say. Ooh. But, but I think that one could possibility again, it didn't have names. It could be the Goldberg and Bret Hart that they are action figures on Instagram. Okay. 
So anyways, if you guys want, head on over to Deep Discount. They've got action figures over there. So kind of scour around their website, see if there's any other figures that might pop up and you guys can get them for basically Walmart prices. So head on over to deepdiscount.com. Deontay, Norm, and Rob down in Southern California, all three said they used to order and they had never had any issues. Scott, I guess more G.I. Joe talk? Action <laughs> Force Sergeant Slaughter. I'm going to have you go into this because I have no idea what Action Force or Sergeant Slaughter is. I'm just kidding. I know what Action Force is. <laughs> yes. So Action Force makes six inch scale, which is kind of the norm now. The six inch scale, but they do army figures. It's essentially like six inch G.I. Joes. You could pretty much fit them into your uh, your classified G.I. Joe line that has recently started hitting uh, store shelves. They put Sergeant Slaughter... Action Force did, into their lineup. You can go pre-order him now. The sticking point for me, I I really want the Sergeant Slaughter. I do. The sticking point for me is that he's 38 bucks. That's shipped. Shipped price, $38. Ouch. (sighs) Man, now you're getting up to, like, New Japan figures. And do I want a Sergeant Slaughter when I already have some Sergeant Slaughters in my collection? Or do I really want that Series 2 Naito or that Series 2 Takahashi from Super 7? See, these are the games now that I'm having to play because price points on figures are continuing to go up. And now I'm having to pare down the list even further about what I can put in my collection and what I can't. As much as I do want that Sergeant Slaughter because it's outstanding. It is awesome. I love the sculpt job on the face. Removable sunglasses. He's got some guns, some knives, a hat. It's killer. It's a great looking Sergeant Slaughter figure, but the $38 price point shipped is going to stop me from getting it, I think, but it's great. How much is your GI Joe figures that you're getting? The six inch Joe classifieds are $19.99 each. Okay. And if I can get them through prime, don't pay anything on shipping. That's free. I don't recall how much Hasbro pulse charges for shipping for the figures each. Um, but it's, it's not anywhere near $38 after all it's said and done for one figure. So I don't know if I win the lottery between now and when pre-orders stop on slaughter, I'll definitely jump on and buy them. But just, if you're looking for them, just Google search action force. Uh, they have a Kickstarter going on right now. When you go to order, you can select Sergeant slaughter from the drop down, proceed to check out and it's 38 bucks shipped. And I hate that it's $38 because now you're in the NJPW super seven range And I haven't pre-ordered any of Series 2 yet from the NJPW line. Not for a lack of want, more for a lack of funds. So I can't justify buying the Sergeant Slaughters to fit in with my G.I. Joe 6-inch line. So that's really where I'm drawing the line, I guess. On Twitter, at JunkShopDog showed off that they are going to be releasing a Popey-style Bruiser Brody figure. And Popey is that early, is actually one of the very first wrestling figures ever. Right. Uh, it had Abdullah the Butcher, Harley Race, Hulk Hogan, Terry Funk, Dory Funk. It had a slew of Japanese and American wrestlers. Well, Junk Shop Dog put up their Bruiser Brody and said, this is going to be coming out for Series 2. I can't wait. I messaged them and I said, thank you. This is awesome. I need to get this. And they they said, we're excited too. I thought that was kind of cool. But picture the old school popies, which was movable arms and some of them looked like the wrestler. This one is Bruiser Brody without a shadow of a doubt. You guys can do a Google search for it or just go on Twitter at Junk Shop Dog. And it has, it's pinned right to their uh, top of their page. And it's the first thing you see. So check it out. I'm waiting for further news on this so I can just run and get it because bottom line is, is yes, I am getting it. And the cool thing is too, I believe there's going to be more names because they're actually calling this series two. So there's going to be more names like they're continuing on the legacy of Popey, which, dude, that's brilliant. We talk about retros all the time. You know, oh, give us the Hasbro scale. And we talk about the LJNs all the time, but we don't really talk about a continuation of Popey. And as you said, those are some of the first wrestling figures that ever came out. And the names that they had are all staples in wrestling conversations of the past. As you said, Hogan, Hanson, Race, And now, continuing the line, Bruiser Brody. Brilliant move. I love it. And we've seen the figure, the picture of it. It looks fantastic. 
I'm super excited for that one as well, Jeff. Kudos to them for not going with like Hasbro or even Galoob or Remco. They went straight back to Popey and they're continuing that tradition. Kudos to those guys. Definitely going to watch for that pre-order to go live. Yeah, I'm going to be following them and seeing what is going to be going on with that. All right, Scott, are you ready for Jazzwares? Not really. (laughs) Jazzware put up pictures of their Unrivaled Series 1. Everybody saw the pictures. There was a lot of backlash regarding it. To Jeremy Padauer's defense, Jeremy came back and said it was the lighting of the picture. And I kind of saw what he meant. It was the transparency, the lighting. It, was just, it, it wasn't good. A lot of people were complaining about the skin tones, about the faces. When you saw the original pictures, it, it, yeah, it wasn't good, man. You're just like, uh-oh, this doesn't look like what we originally saw back at New York Toy Fair or in the commercial. So everybody kind of started hitting the panic button. Jeremy kind of came out and was like, look, it was just a bad picture. It was this, it was that. He was defending it. And there are going to be what they said, running changes. There'll be running changes to Kenny Omega's hair. There's going to be, there, there's going to be running changes. So I don't know how this is going to work. If people that put in their pre-orders over at RSC, if they're going to get what we saw yesterday, but anyway, Scott, did you see the pictures? Yeah, I did. And man, I was so excited for this line. When we first saw the pictures, Jeff, AEW had the commercial. The figures looked awesome. The only complaint I had was I wasn't a huge fan of the Young Bucks, but held excitement because I knew we were going to get a ton more Young Bucks figures from Jazzwares. Then these pictures dropped, and I believe it was Jordan Cassatt said they all looked like they had the COVID virus. And <laughs> I guess with, with the lighting, the way it was set up, Jordan wasn't wrong. Another post person posted a picture of the little kid with the painted face that says, I like turtles put his face next to the Cody Rhodes face and I'll be damned if it wasn't a spit and image dude, but let's give them the benefit of the doubt. If Jeremy look, I love Jeremy. That dude is custom made to deal with us wrestling figure collectors. He gets it. He knows what we're asking for sometimes before we even ask it. So let's give Jeremy the benefit of the doubt to say, okay, it is the lighting. Let's wait for new pictures And let's see what they look like when they finally hit, because what we saw at Toy Fair and what we saw on AEW's commercial, they don't equal what we saw in the pictures that just came out. Just, it's not, it's not the same figures. These were super disappointing. And what we saw originally was just, oh, so much hype. So let's hope that this is an outlier and this is not what they really look like. Because in my opinion, based on those pictures, these are all a pass for me. Series one from top to bottom is going to be a pass. If they look like that, no thanks. At 20 bucks a pop per figure, nope. Walking by those, I'm going to skip them. I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt and say, wait till you have it in hand. Let's say that the lighting was an issue. Because again, Jeremy is an awesome dude. I don't think he'd steer us wrong. He knows what we want. I don't think those pictures are what Jeremy wants for us as fans. As we always say with a new wrestling figure company, give them time to... Work out the kinks. Give them time to do what they need to do to kind of right the ship. Because not everybody's going to be perfect out of the shoot, unless your name's Hasbro or LJN. But, you know, you always got to give them time, just like a podcast. The first few episodes aren't the best. You know, people are still trying to find their voices. They're still trying to tweak audio, editing, whatever it may be. But you give them time, they start to find their voices and the show starts to flow. That's the same thing with wrestling figures is a lot of companies start to write the ship and they start to flow. So let's just give them the benefit of the doubt. If these do come out looking like the, what we saw this past week, just give them time and let them work out the kinks of what they need to. Nobody's going to be a home run out of the shoot. And like Scott said, Jeremy was made to deal with the backlash. Jeremy had responses ready to go. He, he showed the difference in the lighting. He showed the difference in the, uh, the transparency of the pictures and stuff like that. You can go read the responses on his Instagram. Also, Jeremy put out a tweet, Scott, and it says, you want retros, and that's it. Hmm. Interesting. Very interesting. So what does that mean, though? Like, does it mean retro Hasbro scale? Or does it mean names? Retro names, like a Legends line, maybe? 
That's what I was thinking. Because you use that word retro. What's the first thing that collectors nowadays think of? Yeah, it's that throwback Hasbro line that Mattel did. Right. So if you leave that open-ended, if you just say, who wants retros or do you want retros? Is that retro names? Like, is that the Rock and Roll Express that we've been clamoring for? Or is he actually physically talking about the old school Hasbros and what Mattel did? Yeah, I think it would be a, a too soon deal for Jazzwares to jump into making retro figures. I mean, I, I'm sure that fans would want them because Mattel's not doing them, and that would be cool. But me personally, I would rather have Legends in scale with their current offerings to go with what they have out now as opposed to the retro scale. But dude, going back to that conversation about the lighting, mm -hmm. for me now with Jazzwares, it's a wait and see. I'm, I'm not pre-ordering those figures. It's it's For me, it's going to be a wait and see of what's on the peg to actually hold it in person and see. Because for me, the only hiccup for them out of Series 1, really out of Series 1 and Series 2, were the Young Bucks. That was literally my only gripe about it. But then again, like you said, with waiting and giving them a chance, that's what I was doing with the Young Bucks figures. What we saw at, at Toy Fair and what we saw in the commercial, they looked incredible right out of the gate. So to see those pictures now is kind of a letdown, but you're right. You're 100% right. Going back to your conversation, give them time to, to right the ship and correct the wrongs because you're right. Nobody's perfect right out of the gate unless you're Hasbro or LJN. Nobody is perfect <laughs> right out of the gate. So anybody that's going to be able to catch that, that would be Jeremy. And he's going to correct those wrongs. And I even saw where he put out a tweet saying, Orange Cassidy's first figure, pockets as I call them, what do you guys want? What do you want to see in that figure? So he gets it. He's he's putting the feelers out. He's he's listening to the feedback. So if series one is a dud, I'm sure series two through the end of Jazzwares time is going to be a home run. Jeremy's going to correct those wrongs. As far as the retros conversation, I would imagine that that's a red herring baiting over to what Mattel had. And I think it's going to be Legends names. In Hasbro style? No, 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 no. In their six inch regular style. Oh, 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 okay, okay. I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. Yeah, I think that's going to be their San Diego Comic-Con reveal. They're going to show off either a Midnight Express or a Rock and Roll Express. So there are times where a prototype is shown and it doesn't look like what we were expecting. The classic example, the Fabulous Mula and the Jax Classic. The figure that came out looked like the Mad TV character, the Mad character. <laughs> the figure that we were shown, we were hyped for. Yeah. So there are changes that does happen between prototype and final product. So we'll find out what we're getting when people have them in hand and what we're seeing on shelves in August. So just be patient. And again, if you don't like series one, if it doesn't capture you right away, just give them time. They'll write the ship. Like Scott said, Jeremy has our best interest in his thoughts. So give them time. And I understand the initial backlash because I was kind of confused on what's going on, but just give them time. Let's see. Is it Chinese New Year? <laughs> you, you, God damn it, you popped me. <laughs> <laughs> Scott, Super 7 New Japan. Boy, the news just keeps getting worse. Super 7 New Japan orders have been pushed back to October. Thank you at Abe Medina for sending that over. Brian Breaker also got the email. There have been a few other people that have reached out and also got their emails that New Japan figures have been pushed back to October, unfortunately. It happens, you know, and with everything going on, it's not really a big deal at the end of the day, you know, just fine. We know that they're coming. We know that we're going to get them. We just have to wait a little bit longer for them. Not a big deal. They're still going to be incredible when they land on your doorstep. Look, guys. It's 2020. That's all I got to say is it's just 2020. That's at this point in going into July, you just got to roll with the punches and just, uh, well, that doesn't shock me. <laughs> yeah. Let's just hope everybody keeps their gremlins dry. Don't get them wet or you're going to ruin the rest of 2020. Just stop it. Scott, moving over to our buddies over at Figures Toy Company, the ROH ring, Hanson from War Machine, the Dream Team, Chris Hero, and all Jim Cornette's have officially been retired. 
Wow. Dude, I wish I had seen a sellout notice on those because I definitely wanted a cornet and I definitely wanted one of the heroes. And that was the Dream Team one that I wanted. I was also going to be getting War Machine at some point. I just didn't know that they were short stock. And damn it. So now I've missed out on those. Sad. However, the Duke Blue Devil Chris Hero is still available. So you guys, if you want a Chris Hero figure, couldn't find the Cassia Sono on the pegs, head on over there. You can still get the Duke Blue Devil outfit that Chris was in. And Scott, I saved the best for last. Freaking John Cena. I didn't see this Instagram because it's John Cena. <laughs> Clever. Put out an Instagram post that showed the cartoon mask. Did you see this? I did. And excitement, boom, immediate. Okay, is John Cena just a fan of Mask? Is that all we're to assume? I I don't know, but he had the cartoon of Mask. Sent it out via Instagram. I, if they're reviving the Mask cartoon, dude, I'm going to go bonkers. Well, it may just not be the cartoon. It may be a live action movie because, right, Cena's like a big time action star now. He was in the Bumblebee movie and he's tied to the Suicide Squad Part 2 coming out soon. So is Mask now greenlit to be a live action film? Uh, This is great because Mask is really, in my mind, the last big license from the 80s. You could argue like, Crystar and and Silverhawks and Voltron. There are other big names from the 80s, but Mask was next level, at least in my mind. I know that you were a big fan of Mask too, Jeff. They were the last big property from the 80s that has never really been redone or rebooted since the 80s. Nobody ever did it. Didn't happen in the 90s, didn't happen in the, the 2000s, didn't happen in the 2010s. But now John Cena out of nowhere throws this image up of mask on his Instagram. What does it mean? Is he going to voice, like you said, Jeff, maybe a cartoon on Netflix? Is he going to be in a live action mask film? Are we going to get more mask toys? That wouldn't surprise me in the least. Is it going to be a mask comic book? Who knows? But the fact that John Cena put it on his Instagram, it's going to be something dude. I was already excited about San Diego comic-con. Now with this, Holy crap. Like, it's going to be Christmas morning every single day that Comic-Con is going on waiting for this type of news. I'm pumped. Our wallets are weeping right now. Oh, dude, yeah. Shannon's already, like, sharpening her nails to, like, gouge my (laughs) eyes out so I can't see to pre-order anymore. Like, it's going to be crazy, dude. If Mask comes back in full force like I'm hoping and you're hoping and all of the Mask 80s fans are hoping... It's going to be so awesome because you start thinking, okay, what scale is it going to be in? Is it going to be true to the original? Are they going to completely reimagine it and take what was that smaller scale and throw it in a six inch scale like everybody's doing now? But then how do you make the vehicles for that? Oh, dude, look, if Hasbro can figure out how to do G.I. Joe six inch scale vehicles, they'll definitely figure out how to do masks, six inch scale vehicles and figures. So it's, oh, dude. What, it's not just a, what a time to be a wrestling figure collector anymore, right? As 80s kids, what a time to be a toy collector. Because they're bringing back all of our favorites. And it is awesome. Or rad. How do I even... Where do I even put this? I, I have no room to start a mass collection, dude. Well, in addition to your second and third job, in addition to that, you're going to have to buy a second and or third home. Just for figures? <laughs> y- yes, Absolutely. Yes, maybe mom and dad can rent a room to you in their house and you can put your figures in there. Ooh, that that could work. Yeah, you're like, you know what, mom? You really don't need a sewing room or anything like that. You, I'm, I'm just going to put my toys in here, right? <laughs> I'll, I'll pay you to keep the lights on. Just I'm going to put my toys in here. Scott, we're going to go talking to the listeners. What do you say we go talking to them? Let's talk to them. And I just want to hear from my people. Tell me, can I hear from my people? I just want to hear from my people. Scott, this first audio comes in from Nicholas. Let's see what these guys say. Hello, guys. It's Nick again from London. I uh, I really enjoyed the section last week. Everybody's got a price because obviously, you know, I'm a big Hasbro collector myself. And uh, I want to talk to you specifically about something that we've noticed recently, right? The raffles 
that are going on. You see, what I reckon is happening is, right, the reason these prices are just getting ridiculous, one of the biggest things I think that are contributing to this are the, are the raffles I've seen. On, I mean, I'm, I'm not on Facebook, but I've seen these raffles on Facebook. People have shown me these raffles, and I've, I've, I've entered a few. But what I think happening, is happening is that these raffles are getting put on and people are entering these raffles, right, because they can't afford the, say, £200 for the figure. But the price of the figure isn't £200. The price of the figure is like 150 because the people doing the raffles are earning, earning the money. And then they're putting them on eBay once they've won them for 200 quid. And then people that <laughs> are buying them again to put on the raffles, it doesn't matter if they pay over what they're worth because they're going to raffle them anyway, and so on and so on. And slowly, we've noticed these green cards have been creeping up and up and up. People win them on raffles, people put them on eBay. People win them on raffles, people put them on eBay. So what I think really is that these, these one, two, three kids, they're, they're not worth a thousand pounds. Of course they're not worth a thousand pound. But the only reason they're being put up for a thousand pound it's because they're being put in a thousand pound raffles. So if you win a prize in a raffle that sold, you know, a hundred tickets at ten dollars a pop or ten pound a pop, you think that prize is worth a thousand pound. But it's not. So anyway, that's just my opinion. I don't know what you guys think about this. And um keep up the good work and hopefully I'll speak to you again soon. Okay, bye. I love the way Nicholas thinks. That was not even on my radar when I was looking into all this stuff that's going on. Here, we thought it was COVID checks. We didn't even think about that one. He's brilliant, dude. That's a great call. But he's right. That's another layer to this. That's a whole nother side of this that I never even thought of about the raffles. But yes, he's absolutely correct. I've seen raffles where these guys are putting 50 spots, $5 a spot. How much is that, Scott? That would be $250, Jeff. Thank you for a figure that maybe is worth right now with COVID prices, $150 or $175. But like Nicholas said, people can't afford the $150 to $175 figure. So they jump in these raffles. If they win it, they think it's going to be worth $250. That's a whole nother layer. That's a whole different side of this whole thing that I never even thought of. Well, it comes down to also it's worth what somebody is willing to pay. Right. So people that are holding, as Nicholas mentioned, like the one, two, three kid, for example, the people that are holding the one, two, three kids and they finally decide to sell, they're going to throw it up for like eight, nine hundred, maybe even a thousand dollars. Right. Because, hey, why not? Take your shot. See what happens. It only stops when people stop buying at that price. When people stop buying at that price, guess what? The next time he lists that figure because it didn't sell, he's going to post it for maybe, say, seven hundred dollars. It doesn't sell at 700 Then you post it for 6 and so on and so on. It only stops when you stop paying the prices. If you're willing to pay it, by all means, jump into the pool, spend the money, complete your collections. If you've got it, throw it out there and buy your figures. That's great. If you don't like the prices, stop buying the figures. I mean, really, that's what it comes down to. I don't jump into raffles personally. I And look, it's it's strictly because I don't have good luck with those things. I'm lucky to not lose my ass when I walk into a casino, much less throw my money into a wrestling figure raffle. So as a rule, I don't jump into those. I don't fault people that do because, man, if you can score a figure for the price of one admission in, that is incredible. Good on you. I don't play in because I've got bad luck. But it's it, the crazy pricing is only going to stop when people stop paying the prices. If people continue to pay the prices, the prices are going are gonna to continue to escalate. And at that point, you're in or you're out, right? Me personally, I'm out. You and I are very fortunate, Jeff, that there's not a lot of holes in our shared collection that we need to fill. Here we go with the filling holes again. There's not a <laughs> lot of those spots in our collection that we need to complete. So you and I are fortunate in that respect. We're not having to shell out $1,000 for a one, two, three kid figure. But there are a lot of people that have jumped into the Hasbro pool that now need green card figures. And they're seeing these crazy prices and they're thinking, great, I'm going to have to get a second on my house to complete my collection. Or 
that's just going to continue to be a spot in my collection that maybe one day I'll be able to complete. And that sucks because prices went crazy. So it really only stops when you stop buying. And maybe that's what needs to happen to bring it all kind of back into balance, back to where it makes sense. I don't know what that end price is on a one, two, three kid, maybe around three or 400 bucks. I don't know, but 800 to a thousand, that just doesn't seem reasonable to me. Nicholas, thank you for bringing that to our attention, dude. I never even thought about that. Uh, It's funny, Scott, you mentioned that you don't go in on raffles because you don't win raffles. I don't. The only raffle I have ever won was a free one. I (laughs) and Celeste lost our asses trying to win that 86, 87 title that Hogan wore at WrestleMania two and three. We lost our asses. We dumped so much money into it. It, We should have just bought the belt. Yeah. After we lost our asses on raffles, trying to win that belt, dude, I gave up raffles forever. I was like, I can't, there's no way, no way I dude, we were buying in to a pre raffle to get more spots in the main raffle. Wow. That's how bad I wanted this belt. And we lost. We never won, dude. So we just got to a point where it's like, we give up. You know, even Celeste looked at me and she goes, look, I want to get this belt for you, but I'm not going to keep doing these raffles. I said, I'm right there with you. <laughs> I can't either. Yeah. And like you said, you may as well have just bought the belt outright to begin with instead of dumping all the money into raffles. And that's one thing that you definitely need to watch, you know, because you could just be so invested in doing raffle after raffle for a figure, not realizing how many spots you've gotten and how much you've spent or maybe you could have just bought the figure outright originally so that's just another thing to watch but good call by nicholas man maybe the raffles definitely are playing a price or playing a role in these crazy prices yeah thank you nicholas we always look forward to your audios and hope you're staying safe out there scott our next audio comes in from the one the only the great brian breaker let's see what brian's got to say What's up, guys? It is your pal, Brian Breaker, and I have not submitted a listener question in a while, and I think I have a pretty good one for you guys to discuss, and it kind of can go along with the retros, the new G.I. Joe line, which, Scott, I know you're into, uh, and probably other lines, too. And that is something that I loved about G.I. Joe. I loved about Hasbro. Um, And and then LJN kind of had it, too, with the poster, but that was the cutout bio card. Um, Why aren't they doing these anymore like it just doesn't make any sense to me that was actually a huge miss for me in the retro line that mattel did is the bio card that you can cut out was not a part of the packaging and i'm like oh man that that's a huge miss uh gi joe recently relaunched with hasbro in the new classified series scott obviously i know you're a huge fan of those as i am and that was another thing there was no um there was no bio card on the back now i know Like, G.I. Joe, for instance, has a website. You can actually look up the bios of all the characters. But it's like, that's not the same. I want to have the packaging there where I cut out the bio card if I open it. But if I want to keep it mint on card or mint in package, whatever you want to call it, it's still there. I can still pick the box up, turn around, and read the bio. So I guess my question is, why in 2020 is this not a thing anymore? I mean, I've talked about it before. I mean, look at all the main toy lines that are on the shelves right now. Pro Wrestling, Power Rangers, He-Man Masters of the Universe is making a comeback, Star Wars, Transformers, um, G.I. Joe. This is not new properties. These are all very much retro properties. Some are kind of getting rebooted and such, but where are the bio cards? I would love to see bio cards, and I would like to know what you guys think about it. Thank you. Thank you, Breaker, for the question. It was a blast texting back and forth with you. I think we were both kind of reliving our childhoods during those Hasbro reveals. Um, I think you hit it right on the head when you mentioned that there's a website that you can go to to look up characters that are going to be either currently released or are going to be released in the future in the classified line. There's a website you can go to. It's the GIJoe.com website. You can go look at all the characters that are upcoming and they've got all the information on the characters on there. I think that's just bringing an 80s property into 2020, but it's missing something, right? I I 100% agree with Breaker that a big part of the Hasbro, the LJN, and the G.I. Joe line, I think Transformers had it too, if I'm not mistaken. They all had bio cards because you'd buy a toy and you'd want to know more about it. Example, you bought a three and three quarter inch shipwreck figure 
in the original G.I. Joe, a real American hero line. Well, who the hell is this dude in the sailor outfit, and why does he have a parrot with him? Well, you flip the card over, and you read his bio card, and it tells you everything you need to know about the guy. It tells you his real name, most of the time, and it tells you where he went to school, or how he came into the G.I. Joe. It, it would give you all of the information on the guy. Now, it seems they want you to just go to a website, but if you're keeping the guy mint on card, it would be cool to flip the thing over and have a bio card there. Hasbro had it, LJN had it, had all the information. Maybe that's why they don't put them on the Mattel figures now because you're either watching WWE on TV or you're on the website and you already know about these guys. You follow their social media. You don't need a whole background on them. But it's definitely something that if you're going to have a retro line, be it Power Rangers, G.I. Joe, Transformers, even wrestling, I think if you're going to have a retro line, you should have a bio card on the back to maintain the spirit of those toys that we got in the 80s. It's definitely something that's missing because instead of going to a website to learn about this guy, maybe I just want to flip the packaging over and read about him on the back. So 100% agree with Breaker. I think that the internet is kind of what they're hoping that people go towards to find out more about the characters, but I would rather have it on the back of the card. It's a huge omission, isn't it? Oh, it really is. It really is. If you're trying to make love letters to the 80s and you're trying to reboot these franchises, try to maintain as much of the original as you can while bringing it to current day. But a lot of that was the packaging for us, the super colorful packaging with the character and full color on the front. But another big piece of it was the backside of the card where you could see all the upcoming figures and the dude's bio. That was awesome. And that's what's missing on the packaging now. I was having a conversation with Will from the Squared Circle Wrestling Figure podcast the other night, and he actually brought up a great point. He goes, look what figures are on the pegs right now. He goes, Star Wars, G.I. Joe, wrestling. This is all stuff from the 80s. Just what Breaker said, exactly. So what toys from nowadays are kids going to have that nostalgia feeling over when they get to be our age, when they get to be 30 and 40? It, yeah. It's an gr- excellent point. Like, is the toy industry going to hit that halt when us 80s kids or 90s kids kind of get to the age of 50 and 60 and we're like, okay, you know, are we going to hit that point where we're just like, okay, we're not, we're, uh, we're done with toys, you know? But at the same time, when the kids nowadays get to 30 years old and they think back to what they were playing with, what were they playing with? Bratz dolls? That may be the only thing, like Bratz. Was there another toy line that was dominant? Yeah, I, mean, I could go from the experience of my 10-year-old and she plays with Littlest Pet Shops and she plays with LOL dolls. And sometimes like little baby dolls or whatever, sometimes she'll play with those. And it just does not seem to me that there's that attachment to the toys with kids now that we had with ours in the 80s, right? It was almost like that instant attachment. And maybe to Breaker's point, maybe that was because of the bio cards, because we knew about the characters that were in our collection and you kind of form attachments to these things and it brings back so many good memories. But it just doesn't seem that there is that passion now with kids playing with toys And maybe that's because there's other things like video games and stuff they can do on their tablets or their iPads that take their attention away from just playing with their toys. Peyton is already mostly getting out of toys and she's 10 and everything now for her is transitioning into video games. And to be perfectly honest, I don't know if when she hits say 20, 30, 40 years old, if she's going to look back and have that fond memory of her LOL dolls say, that I had at 40 something thinking back to my GI Joe toys in the eighties. I don't know that she's going to have that same attachment to those, you know, as you and I feel about wrestling figures now, Jeff, is she going to feel that way about her LOL dolls? I really don't think so. And uh, I mean, it's not just because of bio cards, but I don't know that, that tie to those isn't the same. And there are so many eighties lines on the pegs. Now there's nothing new that's hit it's it's constant retreads from the 80s and that's great i love it but what new properties have come out that are going to take over the toy aisle there's nothing (laughs) everything is from the 80s that we grew up with just relaunched and while that's cool for us because hey we're reliving everything our kids to your point when they turn 30 or 40 that are like 10 year old now 
are they going to have that same attachment to G.I. Joe, Transformers, Power Rangers, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Mask, hopefully. Are they going to have the same attachments to those toys? I hope so. But from what I'm seeing from my 10-year-old, I don't think so. Yeah, that's one of the things that we were talking about the other night. And it just, you don't know what's going to happen. I mean, like, are we going to hit 60 years old and we're going to be like, oh, man, I don't really want to collect a wrestling figure or we're at, okay. we could be even out of wrestling who knows dude we don't No, you stop security <laughs> but security escort this man out of the building i agree we're gonna be all geriatric and be like hey we're going into the nostalgia segment i need my viagra you know stuff like that you know <laughs> <laughs> dude did you see elite mattel series 257 it's incredible <laughs> <laughs> but like you said dude there's that you don't see that connection with Peyton and her toys like you and I did because we also spent hours and hours and hours playing with those toys where to go back to Peyton, how long was her attention span with LOLs and Lois Pet Shop at a time? Well, I mean, when she got into like a full thing and sometimes she'd bring her littlest pet shops to be part of her little LOL world and her, her play set house and everything, she'd play for maybe an hour at a time. And then she'd go to play with slime and then it would be, let's play Roblox on my tablet or my iPad. And that would be that. Whereas you and I, we didn't have, I mean, there was Nintendo, right? But Nintendo for us was around in 1987, I think. 86, 87. Yeah. Somewhere in there. So up until that point, it was really sitting and playing with toys. We didn't have the distractions of video games. Our TV shows weren't on demand. They were, you either tune in at this time or you're hoping that you catch it on the reruns, right? So while we had the dedication to TV, that was at a set time in the evening. But really for us before video games, it was playing with toys. But now since the advent of Nintendo, maybe the passion for toy lines has died off a little bit because now video games are humongous and more kids than ever are playing them, you know, Fortnite, for example. So maybe the love for toys isn't there like it used to be. But look, I'm going to be 60 something years old and I'm still going to have a toy room, dude. That is never, I promise you that is never going to end. I may tune in and tune out on wrestling, but being a toy collector of the toy lines I love, that's never going to end. I promise you. And look, the way I eat pizza, I'll be lucky to make it to 60. Let's just throw that out there. (laughs) Breaker, thank you for bringing that question to the show. That was a lot of fun, man. Scott, last question of the week comes in from Josh Thompson. Josh Thompson says, Hey, Jeff and Scott, JT here, back with that weekly question. Assuming that Mattel Creations is a successor to Maddie Collector, do you think this is a right move on Mattel not to please fans who want it back, but to compete with Super 7's New Japan line and the Lucha line from Mask Republic Boss Fight Studios? I do think it would be wise for Mattel to give some sort of answer to those lines, besides the fact that they prove that figure collectors are willing to pay a higher price for figures in limited quantity that go above and beyond. They also are competition for Mattel figures. As Scott and Jeff stated before, collectors who really want that New Japan Pro Wrestling line or Lucha figure Boss Fight Studios are probably going to back off from the Mattel figures because they cost more. But what do you guys think? Well, we've already kind of, and sorry, JT, we, I think we've addressed this a couple times during the show already, but to, to talk about it again, I don't know if it's necessarily to compete with the new, the new kids on the block, I guess is what you can call them. Super seven FTC storm. Well, oh, and, oh. And, you said, <laughs> I know what I said. Oh, I didn't ask you to sing. <laughs> And Mass Republic, I don't know if it's necessary to co- necessarily to compete with them, but I think an online presence for Mattel has been sorely lacking, especially given the popularity of wrestling figures now, right? When we started collecting Mattels in 2010, it's safe to say that there's more collectors of these things now in 2020 than there were back in 2010. And Mattel's online presence with these things hasn't been where it needs to be to keep up with that demand. I'm really hoping that this Mattel creations is a pre-order site for stuff that is not retail exclusive, but it also, as we mentioned earlier, turns into 
kind of a hybrid of what Maddie Collector was and what HasLab is to give us exclusives and to give us stuff that becomes crowdsourced. That's my hope of what Mattel Creations is. You're going to call it Mattel Creations. Make it whatever the heck you want. But I'm I'm hoping for kind of a hybrid of HasLab and Maddie Collector. That's my hope. While also giving us access to pre-orders for anything not retail exclusive. That's kind of my hope of what Mattel Creations is. Well, as of right now, it will be similar to Maddie Collector because they are putting up the Mr. T figure. Yeah, and that's great. I love it. But to JT's point about buying other lines instead of Mattel, I can tell you with 100% certainty that I already have a Ricochet figure in my Mattel collection. So if I'm given the choice of buying another Ricochet or a first time ever Naito figure, I'm buying the Naito. If I'm given the option of putting another Seth Rollins figure in my, no offense, Ethan, if I'm putting another Seth Rollins figure in my collection, or can I order this Penta from Mass Republic for the first time ever? I'm going to buy the Penta. So it comes down to repetitive on Mattel's side, but look, let's, let's flip it a little bit. You give me a first time in the line Dexter Loomis or that Penta or that Naito. Well, now the conversation changes a little bit. First time in the lines are always going to have a strong appeal to me. So that's where it's going to come in to where I'm choosing another brand over Mattel or vice versa. Very well said, Scott. JT, thank you for your weekly question. We always appreciate those. Thank you, JT. And that closes out the show. We want everybody to head on over to WrestlingToyTracker.com. I have been using them to price out loose Kamalas lately. So I've also been looking at that on eBay. I should have pointed that out, Scott. But I'm not really finding any that are close to what I'm looking for as far as mint. Okay. We'll s- I'll keep my eyes open for you too. Thank you. But we want you guys to check out Wrestling Toy Tracker. Over there, you can check out the carded and loose prices of defining moments retros ljns hasbros galoobs just toys bendums did i say retros already scott i believe you already said retros okay retros as well i'll say it again but also check that check that out if you are in the hunt for any of those figures wrestlingtoytracker.com or on twitter and instagram toy underscore tracker before we move on to eagle moss i also want to throw a shout out to toy hype USA com C O M on Twitter. Great, great guys over there. GBM actually introduced all of us. So I also want to throw it out to them. They were the ones that actually informed me about the action force Sergeant slaughter. I didn't even know what was going on. So check out toy hype USA com Scott Eagle Moss. Yes. If you have a pop culture or WWE fan in your life and you're looking for a gift for that certain someone, Or if you are a pop culture or WWE fan in your life and you want to treat yourself, head on over to Eagle Moss. Give them a follow on Twitter at HeroCollector underscore. They have a ton of properties under their umbrella from Battlestar Galactica to Star Trek to DC and, of course, to WWE. Check out their great collectibles over there. Again, give them a follow. That would be Eagle Moss on Twitter at HeroCollector underscore. I'm going to throw it back to the podcast buddies and I want to throw it back to Breaker and Bane. As always, we love those guys over there. They just rounded up the two-part interview with Aiden English and I thought it was fantastic. Aiden really came across very humble and I loved it. I thought it was a very, very good interview over there. So go back, check those out. You can also check out the month long of Fully Posable where I was on for two episodes and Scott was on for two episodes. So that was also a lot of fun. And then they also just had Jason Wolf do a sick design of Bane, Bill Benis, which I don't know why they threw that on there. But anyways, <laughs> and Breaker as G.I. Joe's. I thought it was fantastic. The best part was is Bane just recently had to put his dog down, which breaks my heart because we've been through that numerous, numerous times in the past year and a half. But It's the worst. It is. It hits you every single time. But anyways, they put the dog on the shirt, and I thought that was fantastic. Jason Wolf killed it on the design. It's them thinking outside the box, and it's fantastic. They really... When they put their heads together and come up with the design, it's incredible. They did that Halloween comic book cover one. Shannon has that shirt. It's, it's incredible. It's amazing. Jason Wolf just, he'll take an idea 
and expand it to where you're like, dude, I was thinking that, but not to that scale. You're a genius. So Breaker and Bane putting their heads together with Jason Wolf and coming up with this G.I. Joe inspired design. As you mentioned, Jeff, I think the best part about it is not Bill Benis flying out of an explosion, but Yokozuna, Bane's dog, right there next to him. It's a perfect representation of them and G.I. Joe mashed together, mixed in a blender and put on a shirt design amazing i was completely blown away by it if you haven't seen it yet go check out breaker and bane's twitter or breaker's twitter or his facebook what a job by jason wolf and i'm going to get to him in my shout outs but when those guys put their heads together the stuff they come up with is out of this world amazing so go check out that design as scott said you can check out all of Breaker's social media and you can see the design there or bane's as well too so also check out breaker's side project back to the nintendo scott over at doing the favor uh eric is such a great dude and so is barry i am saying that wow good for you he, you know what he said this past week he said on this podcast i am the third wheel he's accepted me as the third wheel <laughs> but what barry sees in me is what barry is to doing the favor he is the third wheel to eric and rachel Eric and oh, Rachel wow. do so much work. And so I relate with Barry as that third wheel. Wow. Well, the positive thing I can say is that neither of you called each other a third leg. So <laughs> good on each of you. That's safe for Drew Vensel. But anyways. <laughs> Whoa. Hey, hey, you know. You take <laughs> it easy over there. <laughs> anyways. <laughs> But Eric and Barry do a fantastic, fantastic show over there. And Rachel being the marketing manager does a fantastic job as well. So kudos to them over there, over at doing the favor. Check them out on iTunes. We talked about him before and we talk about him again. Steve over at the PPW podcast is doing that content creator. Scott and I were just on. That was a lot of fun. In fact, while we were recording tonight, Scott, I just got a text message from Steve and he says, shows up. Sounds great. I was all perfect. That's awesome. Because I'm a stickler for audio. I'm a snob, dude. I, I don't even... I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But that's one of my things is I need good audio. Well, I'm sure our listeners appreciate it too. The better yeah. it sounds, hey, that's yep. a good thing. So that show just dropped this past Friday. Go check it out over at Positively Pro Wrestling Podcast where Eric and Steve do other shows like WrestleMania reviews or pay-per-view reviews. They do those as well and do do a lot of nostalgia talk. So go check them out. Positively Pro Wrestling Podcast or PPW Podcast on iTunes. Each week, the terrific and wonderful Marty and Sarah welcome in their buddies. Ryan Buds does trivia with Buds. And Scott, you are about to be on lockdown with Drunk Wrestling History next week. Yes, we are recording two days next week, doing about five, maybe six episodes in total to have content over the next few months for you guys. Give us a follow on Twitter at wrestling underscore drunk. We've got a shirt up over at What a Maneuver. Our latest episode covers the horribleness, if that is a word, of WrestleMania 11. Two drunk guys and one sober host. It's a lot of fun. Check us out wherever you get your podcasts. You're recording two straight days? Like 48 hours? Uh, no, because I would never make it through 48 hours of consecutive drinking. No, sir. We are going to rec uh, be recording on Monday and then we are going to record on Friday in the same week. So no, there will not be two consecutive days of drinking and talking about wrestling. As uh -oh. fun as that sounds to most, my 46 year old body would not be able to handle that. <laughs> Your 46 year old body can barely stand sitting right there. <laughs> <laughs> I hate to disappoint Brandon, the great Hova. He is my, my drinking hero. I hope I didn't just shame him by admitting I can't do two consecutive days. But uh, spaced out, hey, we're talking. <laughs> so check out Drunk Wrestling History. Also, I want you guys to check out Lucha Libre Figures and Facts. Our third episode is going to be going up pretty soon. And we have a very, very special guest. He is a legendary luchador. And I'm excited for you guys to hear this because we talk about his figure, we talk about we talk to him about his figure, which is awesome. I can't wait for you guys to hear this. I'm so excited to let you guys hear this. It was a great, great show. So, but I'm gonna keep it hush hush for right now until that show drops. But 
you can go back and check out the first two episodes of Lucha Libre Figures and Facts, all part of the Lucha Central Network. Also check out RJ over at Ringside Rant. Also check out Rucker over at Boots to the Faces, also on iTunes. And Scott, roll call. Yes, first and foremost, we talked about him earlier, talking about him again, the great Jason Wolf. Give him a follow on Twitter at Jason WLF. If you need artwork, Jason is your guy. Jason, we know you've been going through it lately. We're sending you all the best. The Fig Life has your back, dude. If you need anything, reach out to any of us. We've got you. In the meantime, guys, if you need artwork again, the great Jason Wolf, he'll take care of you. Give him a follow on Twitter at Jason WLF. And Jeff, I want to throw it out to figure photographers this week. The great Sean Welch. Give him a follow on Twitter at Sean. That's S-E-A-N. Welch Photos. We got V-Trigger Figs. Give him a follow on Twitter at V-Trigger Figs. James Bowen. Give him a follow on Twitter at Abe. A-B-E. Linked. L-I-N-K-E-D. I-N-9-2. And one hell of a guy. One of my favorites. The great Ralphie Vibes. Give him a follow on Instagram at Elite Figure Vibes. And that is Vibes, V-Y-B-Z. And Jeff, that rounds out Roll Call. Ralphie was on Telephone 9, and that was a fun episode. You can also find that in our Rolodex of episodes. Scott, we went a little bit long tonight, man. That's what she said. So, for this 4th of July weekend, anything else? Yeah, I definitely want to wish everybody a great 4th of July, and I'd like to give everybody a little bit of homework. Jeff, I was watching King of the Ring 93 earlier, and I had forgotten that the only semi, this is a spoiler alert if you haven't seen King of the Ring 93 yet, in the semifinal, which ended up being the only semifinal match because Bam Bam Bigelow got a bye straight into the finals, the only semifinal match on the King of the Ring 93 was the great Bret Hart versus the impeccable Mr. Perfect. It's one of those things we always talk about how good Mr. Perfect is, but he was, in fact, perfect because that match happened. It was two faces against each other. Mean Gene kind of played a little shit disturber before the match started backstage in an interview. He was really stirring the pot and really pitting the two guys against each other. Mean Gene was almost a heel in that interview. It was great. But then they got to the ring and they had the match. Now, granted, it wasn't as good as SummerSlam 91, which was an instant classic. Everybody knows and loves that match. Just wanted to throw Mr. Perfect's name back out there as the guy that we all know and love him. But a little bit of homework this three-day weekend. Go watch a Mr. Perfect match. Be it SummerSlam 91, the semifinal against Brett at King of the Ring 93. Any Mr. Perfect match. The dude was incredible. I just wanted to put Mr. Perfect in your brains. I hope you all had a great three-day weekend. Happy 4th of July to everybody. Stay safe, stay healthy. Fig license 2016 and happy toy hunting. Another fun fact about the 93 King of the Ring, Bret Hart won all of his matches in a different way. He never used the sharpshooter either. Uh, You're correct. You are correct. So I'm halfway through the card. I think about halfway. I'm on Hogan versus Yokozuna right now. He beat Razor Ramon when Razor tried to do that suplex off the second rope where he had the guy perched on the top. It was a... um, like a yep. belly-to-back suplex, yep. and Brett reversed it into a pin, and he beat Mr. Perfect, spoiler alert, with a small package. Actually, it was a small package reversal. It was a small package into a small package. Yep. And he beat Bam Bam. Uh, that would be a victory roll. Very good. Never used the sharpshooter once to defeat his opponent, so I thought that was kind of cool. A man of many weapons to finish you off. Uh, he was the best. Thank you to everyone for listening to episode 233 hashtag fig life adios uh, yeah fully possible let's go Jeff and Scott, the Tomb Brothers, busting out the ring. But we don't take it out the box, M.O.C. Happy toy hunting, we'll see you next week. With the OGs of WFP. Fully posable, thank you all for listening. It ain't no storyline, real life siblings. So everybody go and do your toy spotting. Hashtag Fig Life, adios from the Kings.